Hello, my name is Leanne and welcome to Blackboard Pharmacology. Welcome everyone. So today we're going to look at how to mix a morphine syrup. So before we start, I just want you to know that this video is just an example of the procedure and it's very important that you strictly adhere to your own pharmacy's SOP. So this task may seem simple to you, but I can assure you it can be quite overwhelming. When it comes to a point where you have to take responsibility for the mixture, you will think differently. Contributing factors can be because it's a very controlled drug and you don't want to mess up the books. But also, an overdose can produce serious side effects for your patient, while an underdose can be very bad for your patient's quality of life. So patients who need morphine are very sick. It's either your cancer patients or the very young patients like a newborn who is born with an opioid addiction due to a mother who has been using opioids while pregnant. So let's look at the procedure with an example prescription. The prescription will look something like this. Morphine sulfate syrup, the concentration, which in this case is 10 mg per milliliters, and then the doctor will specify 10 mg three times a day PO, PRN for one month. So step one, check that the prescription is legal and written correctly before you start the procedure. So for a prescription to be legal, you need a date, the prescribed medication, the dose, the dosage intervals, the route of administration and the period of the treatment. Also, you're gonna need the doctor's name, the doctor's credentials, the MP number or the intern number, and a signature. All right, so back to step one. The date of the prescription must correlate with the date of the TPH. The TPH is just a document that accompanies any Schedule 6 prescription, and that document is signed by the person who collects it, either the patient or the nurse, and then it's taken back to the Schedule 6 cupboard where we file it to keep a record of every Schedule 6 medicine that went out of the pharmacy. So here's an example of a TPH. The TPH must be thoroughly completed. Very important that there is a patient's address because you're gonna need this patient's address in your schedule book. And also, if you're in a government sector, you can't dispense a schedule six medication for patients living in a different province than where the hospital is located. So it happens a lot that the TPH don't have an address. So the pharmacist just continue to complete the mixture, telephonically ask the nurse to bring the patient's address along when she comes to fetch the medication. And when the nurse eventually comes to the pharmacy and she gives the address, it turns out that the patient is living in a different province. And thus, the medication cannot be dispensed and all the hard work is for nothing. All right. Also, the doctor must clearly indicate the concentration of the syrup. And this will be determined by the pharmacy management of that specific pharmacy. As well as the duration of treatment. Because we need to account why are we giving, for example, in this case, 90 milliliters. And why not more and why not less? So now we can say, but it's for 30 days. And that will explain why we are giving that specific amount of medication to the patient. Now remember, the prescription stays in the patient's file. The TPH is the one that we keep in the pharmacy for our records. So the information on the prescription and the information on the TPH must be exactly the same. For example, the script can't say 10 mg morphine BD, while the TPH states 10 mg TDS. So let's quickly look at the information that needs to be on a TPH. It's gonna be the name of the hospital, the date that the TPH is written, and that date must be the same as the date of the prescription, the full names of the patient, the patient number or the number of the file, and the patient's address. In the column that says description of item, it needs to be indicated the concentration of the medicine. In this case, it's going to be 10 milligram per milliliter. And also the dosage intervals and the duration of treatment. Then, in the quantities column, 
you are going to indicate the total amount of liquid that's going to be dispensed to the patient in figures, nine zero, as well as in words. You're going to need the name of the doctor, the qualification, and the practice number or the intern number. Also the doctor's signature and a speed up. Then you're going to need the name of the pharmacist and the signature of the pharmacist, and then remarks. Remarks, we don't always write something there, but it's quite helpful when there was a specific case and you just want to put something there to remind you maybe or to help the next pharmacist understand why you did things in a certain way. In this case, it's going to be easy. We just dispense 90 ml of morphine syrup, but you don't always have to write the remark. What you have to write though is name of the patient or the nurse that's collecting the medicine, the date, signature of the person collecting and if it's a patient, the cell phone number. So step two will be to do the calculation. My advice will be before you start to calculate, first determine how your scale works in the pharmacy. And by this I mean how many decimals the scale allows you to weigh. So not all the scales can measure a small amount of powder. If the powder you need for your mixture is too small than what the scale can measure, it's going to mean that you will need to create a larger, a bulk solution of morphine syrup and then only take what you need for that specific patient from the bulk of the morphine syrup. Alright, so to calculate the powder, now remember we are using the data from our example prescription. So to calculate the powder, you're going to need 10 milligram times 3 times a day times 30 days, which equals 900 milligram, right? And to determine the liquid, you're going to do a cross multiplication. So we're going to say 900 milligram divided by 10 milligram times 1, and it's going to give you 90 milliliters. Thus, in total, we're going to need 90 milliliters of liquid. Two thirds of this liquid will be distilled water, thus 60 milliliters, and one third is going to be syrup simplex. So that's going to be 30 milliliters. So step three is going to be the paperwork. First, balance the morphine book. You're going to need the patient's name, the file number or the patient number and the address. Also the doctor's name. Then, in the front of the morphine powder book, there will be a control sheet where you're going to write the name of the patient and the dates and the name of the prescriber. This is just to easily identify misuse. Now please remember, never issue morphine to a doctor. Rather let the designated sister of the specific ward come to collect the medicine. The reason for this is that if something goes wrong, there should be only one person responsible that has to account. So it just makes things easier. Next, you're going to print the labels. You need one for your final container and one that you're going to paste on the master batch document. So you paste the label on the master batch document after you printed it and then you fill in the master batch document as thorough as you can at this point. Let's quickly look at what is required for a label. So you're going to need the schedule of the medicine, the name of the medicine and the quantity of liquid inside the bottle. You need a bin number and an expiry date. The expiry date is usually one month or 30 days after the mixture has been mixed. Then you are going to do the instructions. Be careful with this one. On the prescription, the doctor wrote 10 milligram, but on the label, we want to indicate in milliliters, so it's easier for the patient to understand. Right? The name of the patient, the file number or the patient number, and the date of the prescription. Then also, always the address of the pharmacy. On the master batch document, before you start with the mixture, you will be able to write the product name, the preparation date, pack size, batch number, expiry date, patient name, file number. And also the items you're going to use and the quantity of what you're going to use. You will be able to write the person who's going to manufacture, the person who's going to be the pharmacist supervising, or you can be both if you're the pharmacist, and then paste your label. So all the documentation is done. Now you can simply go to your 
compounding area and start with your compounding. So step four is going to be to get everything ready. So you're going to need one spatula, one small clean paper, maybe 10 by 10 centimeters to, to weigh your powder on, two measuring containers for the two liquids, one amber container, plus a lid for your final solution, which you have to clean with distilled water and you dry it thoroughly. Very important to make sure that the lid seals properly. You don't want your ready mixed morphine syrup to drip out of the container. And then one syringe, the biggest one you have, if you have a 60 ml, in this case, great stuff. And then one pair of gloves and the master batch document, plus your label for your final container. All right, so step five is going to be write all the outstanding information on the master batch document. In this case, you're going to need your batch number, supplier expiry date, and the name of the supplier. So you can put that document aside to prevent it from getting dirty or wet. Then you put on your gloves and you tie back your hair and you cover your hair if it's applicable. And then you can put that small paper on the scale and press star or zero. Now you're going to weigh the powder on the small paper. In this case, it's going to be 0 0.9 gram. All right. After you have weighed your powder, you transfer the powder into the final container if it's possible and if you are comfortable with the procedure or you transfer the powder into a glass container, okay, like a glass measuring cup. So step six is going to be to measure the salt water, 60 milliliters in one of the containers that you set aside for measuring the liquid. And then you add 20 milliliters of that water to your morphine powder. And then you're gonna shake your bottle or you're gonna stir in your glass container. Okay? Step seven, measure your syrup simplex. In this case, it's going to need 30 milliliters and you add all of it to your mixture. Again, put on the lid and shake the, the final container or you stir and swirl in your glass cup. All right, now you can add the rest of the water, which is the remaining 40 milliliters and again, shake or stir. In this step of the process, you're going to pour in the water from the glass cup into the final container if you didn't mix it in your final container. Put on the lid, shake it well, and then hold the container to the light to make sure all the powder is dissolved. Just make sure again that the lid is put on tightly. Then you're ready for step eight, which is gonna to be to label the container and to double check your instructions. Also, after this is done, you can file the master batch document. So, the last step. Give the mixture to the patient or the nurse with the appropriate advice, which is going to be the mixture is going to expire within 30 days, store in a cool, dry place, and protect from light. After the patient or the nurse have signed the TPH, you go back to the Schedule 6 cupboard and you put away that document. All right, so now that you've got the basics under control, let's make it a bit more difficult. So... What are you going to do when you get a script that goes like this? Morphine sulfate syrup, the same concentration, 10 milligram per milliliters, but now 0 0.1 milligram TDS per os as needed for one month. In total, you're going to need 9 milligrams of powder, which is very, very little. And also, the patient is going to need to take 0 0.01 milliliter three times a day, which is not practical. So the solution is going to be to dilute the mixture with distilled water after mixing. You're going to mix your morphine syrup and then you're going to add 9 milliliters of distilled water to 1 milliliter of morphine syrup. And thus you will end up with a concentration of 10 milligram per 10 milliliters. And now it's much easier to administrate. So now the patient is going to need to take 0 0.1 milliliters instead of 0 0.01 milliliters. But it's very important to remember that this mixture that you further diluted, it's only stable for seven days. So if you're gonna send the patient home, you will need to instruct them on how to do the dilution and figure out a plan to ensure that the patient dilutes the concentrate again every seven days and that they will have sufficient amounts of medication to last them the entire month. So I hope that you found this video useful and I genuinely hope that it will add value to your career as a pharmacist.